Hey everyone, I've been on a fitness kick lately and have been looking for more equipment to add to my home gym. I'm no Olympian, but I thought that gymnastics rings would be useful for pull-ups and bodyweight exercises. Looking closer, I realized that the professional ones are actually made out of wood, and I got the idea that this is something I might be able to make on the CNC. The modeling is super easy, so in this video, I'm going to walk through step-by-step -step the modeling and machining of gym rings. The rings will be made from plywood. I first tried to use some regular B-grade birch plywood I had on hand, but found that it's not ideal. If there are any voids in the core veneers, you'll have holes and knots in the rings. The best material is Baltic birch plywood, which has many thin veneers and very small voids. Here, I'm using 3 quarter inch Baltic birch and cutting it into 10 by 10 inch squares. Two pieces are glued together for each ring. While the glue is curing overnight, you can get started on modeling the rings. All right, let's model up our gymnastics ring in Fusion 360. So we'll get a new project, and the first thing I want to do is double check the units. So I'll go to Document Settings, Units, and I have it defaulted to millimeters because arguably that's the best unit. But for this project, we're going to use inches. So we'll change that to inches, hit OK, and I'm done with that. Now I'm going to find my XZ plane right in the front, and I'll create a sketch. I know the inner diameter of a regulation gymnastics ring is 180 millimeters. But we just changed our units to inches. But Fusion can convert these things very easily. And so I'm going to start a line from the origin along the x-axis. And this is going to be the radius of our ring. I'll say 180 millimeters divided by 2. So it's 3.543 inches, and that's our uh, radius of the ring. Now the thickness of the ring is going to be 1.25 inches. And so I'm going to get a two-point circle, put both points on the x-axis, and this is going to be 1.25, and the default units right now is inches, so 1.25 inches. Now I'm, I can finish the sketch. Now because this is a circle, the way to model it is to do a revolve command. So I'm going to select the circle, go revolve, select the z-axis to revolve around, new body, and hit OK. And there is our regulation size gymnastics ring that was very easy to model. So we could go ahead and plan some machining strategies for the top and bottom sides of this ring, but there are a couple other things to consider when creating this part. Uh, we do need a way to reference the top and bottom sides together, so we're going to need some reference holes. And then the center of the ring is a big empty space, so if we cut this out of a block of wood, that's going to be a lot of cutting in the middle that is just wasted time. There's a couple tricks we can use to speed this up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a cylinder in the center of this ring that will not be cut out. Uh, it's also going to help hold the ring together while I'm cutting. So I'm going to create a new sketch on the XY plane. This should be in the middle of the ring. New sketch. First thing I'm going to do is project the ring to the sketch. So P for project. Select the ring. Hit OK. And now I'm going to offset a line from the inside of the ring, negative 0.4 inches. Okay, and this is going to be the inner cylinder. I want a reference hole at the exact center, so I'm going to go center diameter circle from the origin 0.26 inches. And that should be big enough to slide in a 0.25 inch dowel to reference the top and the bottom sides. So I'm going to select this area and I'm going to extrude it into a cylinder. I want the cylinder to be the same height as the ring. And right now it's in the exact center on the XY plane. So I'm going to extrude this as a symmetric extrusion on both sides. 
and I'm going to extrude it the thickness of the ring, so it's going to be 1.25 divided by 2, because it's both sides. And now I have a cylinder that's the same thickness as my ring uh, in the middle, and that's going to be uh, material that is not cut out by the CNC. There's also a reference hole in the center that I'm going to use for a dowel pin to reference this top and bottom when we switch sides. Now the other thing I need is some sort of work holding jig to hold the second side while I machine it. Uh, because this is a 3D part on the top and the bottom, it's going to be difficult to fix this to the table. So I'm going to create a jig to hold the second side while I machine it. So I'm going to go back to my document tree, create a new component. This new component is going to be called jig. Okay, so jig is active over here. I'm going to start a sketch from the bottom of the cylinder, the very bottom surface. First thing I'm going to do is again reference the ring. So P for project, I get the ring on there. I also want to project from the cylinder itself. So I'll select the cylinder and hit OK. So I have all these selected. I want to offset some lines. This is going to be a quarter inch bigger than my gym ring on the outside. And it's got to be big enough where the cylinder can fit in the middle. So I'm going to offset a line here by 0.1. And that should let the cylinder sit down in the middle of the jig. I'm going to select all these areas and extrude this into a jig that can hold my gymnastics ring. Now, this jig is going to be made out of one half inch particle board. So I want a total thickness of one half inch. I'm going to extrude this, so E for extrude. I'm going to do this as a two side extrusion. And the first side is going to be 0.1 inch. And the second side is going to be 0.4 inch. So for a total thickness of one half inch, I'm going to create a new body and hit OK. So there's my jig. It's a solid disc that's going to hold the ring. So now I need to cut out a space for the ring to sit in. To do that, I'm going to use a Boolean command. So go to Combine. My target is going to be the disk, the jig. The tool is going to be the gymnastics ring itself. And I'm going to make sure to have Keep Tools selected because I want to keep that gymnastics ring body. It's going to be a cut and hit OK. And now I have a jig that can hold the ring while I machine the second side. So if we put everything together, it looks like this. But it is two different parts, the jig and the gymnastics ring with the cylinder in the middle. Okay, I'll quickly walk through the machining strategy. So we go to the manufacturer workspace and I've set up three different setups for this ring. The first is going to be the jig. So let's turn off the ring and we'll talk about that first. Now, I said I was going to cut this out of half inch thick stock, but I didn't have any. So I ended up cutting it out of three quarter inch thick stock. Therefore, the first operation is going to be a facing operation to get this down to thickness. This uses a surfacing bit to cut things down to a one half inch thickness. The second operation uses a ball end mill and it's going to cut out the final contour of where the ring will sit. This is the negative space. I have the step over set at 5% so it's going to make a very smooth curve on the inside. The third operation uses a 1 8 inch end mill, and it's just going to cut the outline of the part. The fourth operation 
cuts the inner circle of the part and I'm left with the jig itself. So we can turn that off and get back to our ring. The ring itself has two sides so we're going to start with the front side setup. This is going to be made out of one and a half inch stock. This is two pieces of three quarter inch plywood glued together. Uh, it's 10 by 10 inches and it fits the ring very nicely inside. So the first operation is going to be a boring operation. Uh, this is going to bore out the reference hole. This uses a 1 8 inch end mill, a very long one, to get all the way down past the stock and into the spoil board. This will create a reference hole so we can reference the second side of the part in the same location. The second operation is going to be a 2D contour. This uses a 1 quarter inch end mill to cut out the outline of the ring itself. And this, this leaves a bunch of space for finishing too, but this will cut off the corners and remove a bunch of material. So then we have a circle to work with. third operation is a pocketing toolpath. This is a 3D pocketing and it's going to be the rough clear for the rings itself. It's going to use the same one quarter inch end mill to rough out the space for the ring. Now it's set to not cut anything inside the center cylinder to save us time. It's also set to have 40 thousandths of stock to leave before it cuts into the ring itself. So it won't be the final pass, this is just a roughing operation. The final operation then on the front side is using the one quarter inch ball end mill. And it's going to be a scallop tool path that follows the outline of the ring itself that will give us the nice smooth curve. After that, we can flip the stock over and go to the back side. So, the back side, the axes are inverted. So we flip the part over and align it using the dowel hole. To machine the backside, I turn the stock upside down and use tape with CA glue to hold the finished side in the jig. Then I use the center hole to locate the stock using a 0.25 inch pin. While you need to re-zero the Z after each tool change, the X and Y zeros stay constant for both the front and back side operations. This has two operations. The first, is again a roughing pass. This is going to be a pocketing tool path to clear out space using the same tolerances. It will leave the cylinder in the middle and it will leave 40 thousandths around the part itself. also doesn't cut quite all the way down to the midline of the part. So this leaves an onion skin of material between the ring and the cylinder uh, that's going to help hold it in place for the final pass. The final operation is again a scalloping using the one quarter inch ball mill to get the backside surface of our part. And if everything is aligned, we should end up with a gymnastics ring as a final result. Thank you.